all of you awesome scuba divers out there, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. Today we're diving around the Derawan Islands with the Raja Ampat Aggressor Liverboard. Derawan Islands are part of the fabled Coral Triangle in Southeast Asia, so it's just teeming with marine life, but let's learn a little more about the islands themselves. The Derawan Islands are an archipelago of islands off the east coast of Borneo in Indonesia. Because of the island's location and the isolation, these small islands are home to a very wide variety of species and it's considered the second most biodiverse place in the world. Derawan Islands are part of the Coral Triangle, which features 872 species of reef fish, 507 species of coral and invertebrates, including protected species. The islands themselves range from teeny tiny pristine islets to inhabited islands with coffee shops and restaurants. Air temperatures are between 23 to 32 degrees Celsius throughout the year. The climate tends to be hot and humid all year round. The dry season runs from April to October. From November to March, this is the rainy season with the most months of January and February receiving the most rainfall. July, and August and September are often the driest. So depending on when you want to go, that, that's the driest time of year to go. Bahasa Indonesia is the national language, but many ethnic Bajau people living on the islands speak the Indonesian Bajau dialect. A lot of people who work with tourists speak some English, so you can communicate. The currency is the Indonesian rupiah. Uh, prices are going to be written with RS or RP in front of the amount. Along with the Tajian Islands in Sulawesi and Raja Ampat in Papua, the Derawan Islands are part of that coral triangle that is considered one of the richest areas for marine life in the world. The biodiversity beneath the surface is unbeatable. Potential sightings range in size from mantas and whale sharks to teeny tiny pygmy seahorses. Water temperatures are stable throughout the year, holding between 28 and 30 degrees Celsius. Depending on how well you handle the cold, this is 3 mil wetsuit territory. Um, at least you want something like a rash vest just to protect yourself from the sun. Uh, some divers might be more happy in just a shorty or even yeah, just a rash vest and board shorts, but it's worth bringing a wetsuit if the water temperature is a little bit lower, just in case, especially if you plan to dive four or five dives a day, including the night dives. You'll be be much more comfortable in a bit of neoprene. As far as things that you will see and dive sites you can visit, Kakaban is known for the non-stinging jellyfish lake. Located in the middle of the island and a brisk 15 minute walk, the non-stinging jellyfish have inherited the lake for centuries and the, there are no known predators, so it's just a lake full of jellyfish that don't sting, which is pretty cool. The outer ring of Kakaban Islands offers divers a wide variety of dive sites that includes corals, large pelagic and thrilling caves. The most famous area is Barracuda Point, which has schooling barracuda, which are visited by large tuna and sharks as well. Sangalaki, this area is famous for the large population of turtles and manta rays year round and guests will frequently see them feeding. The island has a turtle nursery run by the local government which can be visited as well. Whale sharks are quite frequently seen off of the coast of this island. Maratua Atoll, the Raja Ampat aggressor's favourite dives are the Channel and Big Fish Country, which has tornadoes of barracuda, grey reef sharks, thresher sharks, loads of turtles and schooling eagle rays. Maratua Island has at least 13 caves with hundreds more that have yet to been explored, but of course it's best if you stick to open water if you're not qualified. Palau Panjang and Derawan, this is an area known for amazing macro life such as Satomi pygmies, sea dragons, the ghost pipefish, frogfish, blue ringed octopus, uh, harlequin shrimp and tiger shrimp. This is a macro haven, lots of little weird and wonderful things and it's a great opportunity to get your camera in the water. The Raja Ampat Aggressor is a 100-foot steel ship. 
built and powered for comfort, safety and stability. She cruises at eight knots and has a 220 volt power on board. Accommodations include one master stateroom with a queen size bed, two deluxe staterooms with one queen bed and one twin bunk bed, and five with two twin beds in an L shape pattern. All staterooms have portholes or picture windows, climate controls, TVs with movies and private bathrooms. The Rajarampa Aggressor sleeps 16 guests in privacy and comfort. She features a roomy air-conditioned salon and dining area and shaded sun deck complete with lounge and deck chairs. There's also a TV and media player in the main salon. Diving amenities include nitrox, a camera table and freshwater showers after you dive. There are no 110 volt outlets in the stateroom, only in the large station. There are four itineraries with seven, 10 and 12 night charters offered. Seven night trips are gonna average up to about 22 dives, including the night dives and up to 39 dives on a 12 day trip. There's a variety of nightly entertainment, including diving, obviously, uh, fish identification presentations, movies, games, and more. There's also a small library of books for exchange and that's maintained on board, as well as fish ID books for your reference. All of your meals and your snacks and beverages are in provided whilst you're on board. And the menu on board is varied and of course plentiful uh, as with most liverboards um, with a variety of Indonesian feasts and local cuisine. If you do have any special dietary requirements, please make sure that they're noted when you're booking your trip as early as possible. In the morning, you'll awaken to fresh fruits, uh, hot entrees, cereals and juices. Lunches typically feature delicious local cuisine. And then dinners in the afternoon are served each evening and include salads, vegetables, seafood, beef or chicken with a fresh homemade dessert. Once on board, please speak to the chef about any special needs just to make sure that they can get things in. Certain special dietary and beverage requirements uh, may not be available due to the remote nature of this location. So it's best to ask as early as possible when booking the trips just to make sure they can accommodate you. The Aggressor's beverage selection includes fruit juices, soft drinks, iced water, iced tea, coffee, and a limited selection of local beer and wine, which are complimentary. Due to the high duty charged on liquor, they suggest that you bring your own special brand if you do need a drink during your trip. Drinking and diving obviously do not mix, so once you consume alcohol on board, you become a sunbather until the following day. For more information about diving Indonesia or the Derwan Islands in particular, then visit aggressor.com and check out Aggressor Adventures if you have any questions. Uh, there's going to be links popping up in this corner throughout the video and links will be down in the description to take you to their website. You can always head over to our website scubadivermag.com for more diving ideas and subscribe to the channel here on YouTube if you haven't already. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.